It's quite the trend right now for movies to be remade and reimagined, but this has also been the case with many video games for quite some time now. But as many of the movies go as well, a lot of these video game reboots aren't exactly worth the wait. Welcome to Trending 10, and today we're counting down the top 10 worst video game reboots. Now for this list, we're going to be focusing on video games that were released with the express intention of restarting a franchise or breathing new life into it after a period of dead time. You guys ready? Let's begin. Number 10. Turok The Turok series started on the Nintendo 64 and was incredibly fun, pitting humans and dinosaurs against each other with interesting weapons and intimidating enemies. In 2008, we got a reboot of the series for the Xbox 360 and it wasn't even close to the originals. With bland level designs, muddy graphics, uninteresting weapons, a multiplayer that died out quickly, and a controversial achievement that required players to kill their teammates in multiplayer in order to unlock it, the 2008 Turok only made us want to go play the original Turok Dinosaur Hunter, or Turok 2 Seeds of Evil, or even Turok Evolution. Number 9. Medal of Honor Way back before Call of Duty was the dominant military multiplayer shooter, its main competitor was the Medal of Honor series, which focused mainly on World War II battles. But in 2007, everything changed. Activision and Infinity Ward had released Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, and two years later, Modern Warfare 2 transformed the face of multiplayer military shooters. EA knew that in order to keep up with Call of Duty, they would have to give their series a complete makeover. And in 2010, Medal of Honor was reborn with a modern theme and a more mature tone, just as Call of Duty had done three years prior. The game got good reviews, but it had a multitude of problems. Aside from being very basic and obviously a ripoff of Modern Warfare, Medal of Honor also got a lot of negative attention from multiplayer battles, always requiring one team to be the Taliban. The developers tried to defend their choice, but requiring players to betray the Taliban was a little bit too far in the opinions of some gamers, and the game got quite a bit of negative attention for it. Hoping to fix their mistakes and reclaim the title of FPS King, a sequel, Medal of Honor Warfighter, was released in 2012, and good god was it awful, further driving the nail into Medal of Honor's coffin. Number 8. Conquer Live and Reloaded One of the greatest N64 games of all time is easily Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Hell, some would even call it one of the greatest games of all time. Released in 2001, Developer Rareware was purchased by Microsoft just a few years later, and was tasked to create a remake of Conquer's Bad Fur Day, which would bring the series back to life for future titles. The remake, Conquer Live and Reloaded, was released for the original Xbox in 2005 and featured a full remake of the single-player story and added a new multiplayer mode for the new, at the time, Xbox Live service. While the multiplayer was pretty fun and was actually quite popular for a while, the story mode was just disappointing. The graphics were strangely subpar, and there were many sequences where the N64 version looked superior to the remake. Add that in with the heavy censorship of much of the jokes, and well, you've got yourself a very disappointing remake that, if we're being completely honest, shouldn't have been made. Microsoft should have just used the game's development time to make a sequel rather than just downgrade the N64 classic. Number 7. Final Fight Streetwise Final Fight is one of the most legendary series of side-scrolling beat-em-ups and is an arcade classic. The first game, released in 1989, is one of the greatest action games of all time and was incredibly influential on games to come. Wanting to bring the series back into the next generation, Capcom ordered a 3D reboot of the series to be released in 2006. Now, aside from the strange choice to develop the game for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox when the PS3 and Xbox 360 were set to release in just a few months, the game was just plain bad. Many games struggle with the transition from 2D to 3D, and Final Fight Streetwise is quite possibly the worst of the bunch. Bad graphics, dumb AI, a horrible camera, and awkward mini-games that pulled the player out of the action with little to no warning. Streetwise was a commercial failure, and there's not been a Final Fight game since its release. If you want to relive the classic name, go play the originals. Stay very far away from Streetwise. Number 6. Star Wars Battlefront Oh, how far the Battlefront name has fallen. Star Wars Battlefront, released in 2004, is one of the most popular Star Wars games of all time, allowing players to recreate the massive battles of the original and prequel trilogies. 
The sequel, Star Wars Battlefront 2, was arguably even better, giving players even more ways to do battle and rewrite the Star Wars history. Fans everywhere were hyped when it was announced that there would be a reboot of the series developed by DICE, the studio behind the similar in concept and very popular Battlefield games. However, there was a slight problem. The game was to be published by EA, who have a very bad reputation with gamers across the world. Upon the release in 2015, the Battlefront reboot looked incredible and is arguably the best looking game on the 8th generation of gaming consoles. However, the actual gameplay itself was seriously lacking. With only a handful of modes and maps to play on, the removal of fan favorite features like space battles, the prequel era, and galactic conquest, and a heavy reliance on the player purchasing expansion packs, EA's Battlefront failed to live up to its predecessors and many gamers are worried about the sequel due out in 2017. Number 5. Alone in the Dark Alone in the Dark is a strange case. The original game, released in 1992, redefined the survival horror genre. There were quite a few sequels, but none of them managed to recapture the success of the original. There was even a movie adaptation in 2005 that is widely considered one of the worst movies ever made. But needless to say, Atari wanted to recapture the horror and power of the original, so they ordered a reboot to be developed for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. The game got mixed to negative reviews, with many gamers turned off by the repetitive gameplay, average graphics, bad controls, and incredibly cheesy dialogue. The game got even more bad attention after Atari threatened to sue websites giving the game bad reviews, claiming that these websites were not sent review copies and were reviewing an illegal download of the game. It was of course later revealed that the critics were indeed playing legitimate copies of the game and Atari was simply attacking negative criticism of it, leading to even more backlash for Alone in the Dark. Number 4. Sim City Sim City has been around forever, with the first game being released in 1989. It seemed appropriate that in 2013, EA would start anew and bring the series into the next generation with new features and visuals. The SimCity reboot was released in 2013 and went down in gaming history as one of the most disastrous launches of all time. Thanks to the game frequently demanding an internet connection, even when not using multiplayer services by the way, many gamers experienced server crashes, game crashes, bugs, and loss of save data. EA later patched the game to remove much of the always online requirements, but the damage by then had already been done. SimCity 2013 was a disaster, which is a real shame as the game is actually quite good when it's working properly. But actually getting the game to work properly, however, well, that's another story. Number 3. Bomberman Act Zero When you think of Bomberman, you think of a lighthearted classic with that cute little dude maneuvering himself through maze after maze. What you don't think of is a dystopian future with a giant robotic creature in a gritty environment battling for his life. Now, we're not sure whose idea it was to turn the cute bomber man into something out of a Zack Schneider film, but it was a very, very bad idea. Aside from the very forced grittiness and out of place darkness, the game was just bad with repetitive level design, unbalanced AI, bad hit detection, which is kind of essential in a Bomberman game and a total lack of a save feature, which is essential in any game. This Bomberman game is universally referred to as the worst in the series, and some even go as far as to call it the worst game of all time. We don't blame them at all. Number 2. Sonic the Hedgehog This flop, known by many today as Sonic 06, was meant to revive the blue speedster and bring him into the next generation of gaming consoles, as it had been quite some time since his last 3D game. Well, what ended up being released is known today as one of the worst games of all time. Bad physics being virtually unbeatable thanks to uncountable bugs, insanely long loading screens, and hardly any redeeming qualities anywhere to speak of, Sonic has had it rough in the 21st century, and Sonic 06 was just the beginning. Number 1. Steel Battalion – Heavy Armor this legendary 2002 mech battle game became known for its massive controller. Featuring 40 buttons on the controller itself, and original models of it are now insanely valuable, as they have quickly become a collector's item after the release. So, what happens when you take a game with an incredibly deep control scheme and reboot it using the inferior Xbox 360 Kinect in place of an actual controller? Well, you get Steel Battalion Heavy Armor. 
Released in 2012 and intended to show off the power of the Kinect and prove that it was useful for more than just kid games. This would have been epic if the Kinect actually worked. The Kinect just wasn't optimized for such accurate motions and gesture recognition, and the game was a complete failure, as it was virtually unplayable thanks to reliance on a broken system. What hurts the most is that the story of Heavy Armor is actually quite good. And going back nowadays, you can see the potential of what this game might have been if only the Kinect would have worked as planned. Unfortunately, it's unlikely we'll ever get another Steel Battalion game thanks to this flaw. But alright guys, that's it for our list of the top 10 worst video game reboots of all time. Know of any more? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more great content. But alright, that's going to be it for this one guys. Thanks so much for watching Trending 10, your guide to what's viral right now.